About 10 months ago, we did a video when the Nifty 50 hit an all-time high of 20,000. Fast forward to today, the index of India's biggest companies is close to 25,000. That's an impressive 25% surge. But the growth story doesn't end with large caps. The mid and small cap segments have also seen phenomenal gains over the past year. The Nifty mid cap 150 has skyrocketed by 53.56%. Nifty small cap 250 on the other hand is up by a staggering 57.42%. Now I'm sure even you have fabulous returns on your investments in this broad based rally. But this rally also raises several important questions like should you book your profits now or invest more? Is this rally supported by strong fundamentals or are we in a bubble? So today we are going to find answer to these questions. For this, we will analyze large, mid and small cap indices on three different parameters. We will see if they are overvalued, fairly valued or undervalued. Finally, we will see what your investment strategy should be in the current scenario. Now, this video contains a lot of data and interesting insights. So I recommend you watch the video till the end. Now, let's start with our first metric, the price to earnings ratio. The P.E. ratio is a popular valuation metric. It tells you how much money investors are willing to pay for every rupee of the company's earnings. So if a company's P.E. ratio is 40, it means investors are willing to pay 40 for every rupee the company earns. Now it indicates whether the stock or an index is expensive, cheap or fairly valued. Now the P.E. ratio has many uses and we covered this in another video on the ET Money YouTube channel. I have attached the link in the description section below. So do check it out. Now there are two ways to look at the PE ratio. You can check either the trailing or the forward PE. Let's first look at the trailing PE ratio. Now as the word trailing implies, we look at the historical earnings of the companies. So we use the current price of the index and the historical earnings reported by companies to calculate the trailing PE ratio. Now as of July 19, the Nifty 50 level was 24,530 and its earnings per share was 991.7. So the trailing PE ratio of Nifty 50 is 23.31. Now if we compare this with the PE ratio of the last 10 years, then they are close. The 10 year median PE ratio of Nifty 50 is 23.44. However, if we take slightly longer data for 15 and 20 years, the valuation seems slightly higher. The 20 year median P of the index is 21.33 and the 15 year median P ratio is 22.36. Now both of these are slightly below the current P of 23.31. Now before we form any judgment, let's also look at the forward P ratio of this index. A forward P ratio simply implies that you divide today's index levels with the expected earnings over the next 12 months. This will tell you how much investors are willing to pay for every rupee of future earnings. Let's understand this by mapping the Nifty EPS over the last few quarters. The growth in earnings has been significantly higher from 2021 onwards. The EPS of the index compounded at 19.5% over the last five financial years. Now the good thing about earnings is that they generally follow a rather linear pattern. Barring some colossal events like a pandemic, they tend to be quite predictable. So if we expect a similar 20% growth in the next financial year, the forward P of Nifty 50 would be 19.4. This is lower than the 20 year median P of 21.34. Similarly, if we assume earnings to grow at a lower rate, say 15 or 10%, then the forward P of the index is 20.2 and 21.16 respectively. Now these ratios are broadly in line with the 20 year median PE of the Nifty 50 index. So from a PE ratio perspective, despite the 24% plus returns that Nifty 50 generated in the last one year, its valuation still doesn't appear to be significantly overheated. Now that's because the growth seems to have followed the earnings. In FI24, companies in the index reported an earnings growth of approximately 14.86%. So even though the index rallied, earnings also grew, which prevented it from venturing into overvalued territory. Alright, 
Now let's do the same analysis for the Nifty mid cap 150 index. Now this index is relatively new, so we could only find the P ratio of the index since 2019. Here we use the 5 year median P of the index to look at its valuation. Currently the index is trading at a P of 42.17. Now, if we compare this with the P ratio of Nifty 50, the mid cap index looks extremely expensive, but that's not the right comparison. So we looked at the historical trend. The five year median P of the index is around 27. The current P is about 56% higher than its median P. So clearly the mid cap companies are trading at a higher valuation. Now, if you dig deeper, there's an interesting trend between March 2022 and March 2024, the mid cap index was trading in line with its median P. However, from April 2024, there was a significant jump in valuations. If we look at the performance of index between 1st April 2024 and 19th July 2024, the index is up 15.08%. There is a problem here. The 15% returns in little over three months cannot result in such high valuations of the mid cap index. As we discussed, the current P is 56% higher than the long term median P. Now P has two components, the price of the asset and the earnings. So there can be two reasons for a higher valuation. First, the stock prices went up significantly, but that's not the case here. The index has gone up by 15% in the last three and a half months. Second, the earnings have decreased. That's why see mid cap index is currently at a much higher P. To see if this is true, we examined the index earnings per share during this period. And lately, there has been a downtrend in the index's earnings. The Q4 earnings of FI24, which companies started reporting from April onwards, were lower than previous quarters. This resulted in a lower EPS for the index. Now, the lower earnings in Q4 of FI24 has pushed the mid-cap index into an overvalued territory. Some reasons behind the muted earnings could be high interest rates and high inflation. These two could put stress on the company's financials. When we analyze the forward PE, the mid cap index looks significantly overvalued. All right, now let's look at the data for the Nifty small cap 250 index. Like the mid cap index, this index is relatively new. So we use the five year median PE for our analysis. Currently, the index is trading at a PE of 30.8. In absolute terms, a P ratio of 30.8 doesn't look very high for small cap companies. The five year median P of the index stands at 29.11. So the median P and current valuation difference is not very high. If we look at the forward P of this index and assume the earnings to grow by 15%, the forward P of the index is 26.78. This is also lower than the five year median P of the index, which is 29.11. Now the valuation of small cap doesn't appear to be as stretched as the mid cap companies. We were curious to know why this was happening. So we examined the earnings growth of small cap companies. Here, unlike mid caps, we don't see a drop in earnings. This is the primary reason why, despite the 57% plus return, the index is not in overvaluation territory. Small caps are currently trading slightly above their five year median P. Of course, the conclusion is based on analyzing just one parameter, which is the price to earnings ratio. When analyzing the three indices, we looked at trailing and forward P. Now there are some assumptions that we need to make for calculating the forward P. When we assume certain set of data, there is always a possibility that things can turn out to be different. Nevertheless, looking at the combination of the trailing and forward P ratios can be a good indicator of understanding the valuations of the equity market. For the current scenario, the large cap and small cap appear to be slightly above their long term PE valuation, while the mid caps appear to be an overvalued territory. All right, now let's move to the next metric, the Schiller PE of the index. But before we proceed, if you're still watching this video, I'm sure you find the content insightful. We do a lot of research and develop content that you can use to make smarter investment decisions. So I recommend you subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you never miss a video from us. In the previous section, we looked at the earnings of companies that are part of large, mid and small cap indices. However, earnings in the recent past were affected by unpredictable events like wars, 
high interest rates, high inflation, recessionary fears, etc. Now, while these were big ones, many smaller events keep on happening all the time. For example, seasonal demand, business cycles, disruptions in supplies and so on. For this reason, many investors prefer to use the cyclical adjusted price earnings ratio. This ratio is also called the Schiller price to earnings ratio. It is in recognition of the Nobel Prize winning economist Robert Schiller who created this metric. Now, simply speaking, this P ratio is adjusted for business cycles and inflation. It is calculated using the average inflation adjusted earnings over the past 10 years. Now, this helps to smooth out the impact of economic cycles and short term fluctuations in corporate profits. Now, with regards to India, the only published data we could find was on a website by Sibilis Research. The company publishes this data semi annually. Now, the latest data is as of December 2023 when the Nifty 50 Schiller PE was 34.87. Now, the average Schiller PE ratio of Nifty 50 in the last seven years was around 28.5. So, if we compare the recent ratio with the average, the index appears overvalued. But mind you, this is based on data of December 2023. Since then, Nifty 50 increased by almost 13%. So, if we do a simple extrapolation without considering earnings, the current P ratio would be closer to 39.4. This leads to an even higher difference in current and average valuations. So, even though this is an improved metric over the simpler P ratio, it should be looked at in conjunction with earnings graph. As this data is available with that lag, it doesn't take the latest corporate earnings into account. So you may not get an accurate picture during rapid earnings growth or decline. All right, let's move to our next metric, the market cap to GDP ratio. The market to GDP ratio is also called the Warren Buffet indicator. Buffet often cites it as one of these primary directional tool for determining whether a country's stock market is cheap or expensive. It's a very high level metric and is calculated by taking the value of all publicly traded stocks in a country and dividing it by the country's nominal GDP. For example, the current total market capitalization of all listed companies on BSE is 412 lakh crore and the India's nominal GDP is around 295 lakh crore. So, if we divide the total market cap by the nominal GDP, we get a ratio of approximately 140%. Now, to see if this ratio is high or low, we can compare it with the historical average. While the 10-year average is 95%, the current market cap to GDP ratio is 140%. Now, if we look at the past decade, it has never been as high as it is today. The 10-year low was 55% in the year ended 2020. The current ratio is higher than its historical average and is on the higher side. Now recently, the Business Standard newspaper also released a similar analysis. The report highlighted that the current ratio of 140 is just a notch below the all-time high this ratio made in December 2007 at 149.4. The Economic Survey 2024 released recently also commented on this metric. It highlighted that the Indian economy's GDP to market cap has increased significantly in the last five years. As of March 2024, it was 124%. And as of financial year ending 2019, it was 77%. During the same period, China's market cap to GDP ratio increased marginally from 60 to 61%, while Brazil's ratio declined from 65% to 44%. Now, the survey said this high market cap to GDP ratio can lead to market instability. So, based on this metric, India appears to be trading at a premium to a historical average and some of its peers. There are few observations if we combine our findings from the three metrics we just analyzed. First, large cap stocks are trading slightly above their long term PE. However, the extent of overvaluation is not very high. Second, mid cap stocks are definitely overvalued. So they are currently trading in overheated category. This could also be contributing to the country's high market cap to GDP ratio. Lastly, small cap stocks also trade at above average valuations. However, like large caps, the extent of overvaluation is not very high here. In all, the market is definitely not in an overvalued zone most of the stocks are trading above their historical valuations. 
Now, whether you are a mutual fund or a stock investor, we advise you to exercise caution and not go overboard with your equity investments. But remember, we don't recommend that you sell all your equity investments. After all, the above analysis is solely based on fundamentals. Investor sentiment is another important factor that determines market behavior. At present, the sentiment around Indian markets is broadly bullish. There are many factors that may contribute to an extended rally of the index. For example, the central banks may decide to start rate cuts by the end of this year. Now, if that happens, then it will increase liquidity in the market, which can increase consumption and boost the market. Overall, if you are a long-term investor, we recommend continuing your SIPs and rebalancing your portfolio. In the current scenario, rebalancing could help to book profits from equities. This may not be a good time to make lump sum investments. So don't get carried away by the market making new highs and invest a lump sum. And with this, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you found the content insightful. And if you did, please don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. I'll be back soon with another video. Till then, take care. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.